You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa De Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Have you ever tried to practice meditation, but have no idea if it's working or even if you're doing it right? Wouldn't it be awesome if there was something to let you know when you're in the zone to let you know to do more of that? Well, there is something that does exactly that. It's called Muse. Muse is a brain sensing headband that helps you find more calm, sharper focus, and better sleep. It does this by measuring your brain waves and lets you know exactly when you're in a meditative state. It's an awesome tool for kids and for adults alike. You can get 15% off any Muse product by clicking the link in the show notes below. Check them out at choosemuse.com. And again, don't forget to use that link for 15% discount at checkout. Hi, and welcome back. I hope that you're feeling good, looking good, and doing better in this world than you were yesterday. So on the day that this podcast is being released, it is Mother's Day in the U.S. And I say the U.S. because sometimes we assume that it's Mother's Day the same day everywhere. However, in Dominican Republic, we celebrate it the last Sunday in May. So living in the U.S., we actually get to celebrate Mother's Day twice. So anyhow, with that being said, happy Mother's Day to all. And just in case, if you're not listening to this on the day it is being released, stick with me as the story may still resonate despite it not being Mother's Day. Now, I am conscious and aware that Mother's Day can bring up many emotions in people. We all fall into different categories based upon our own personal experiences. Some may have never met their birth mother. Some are reminded of traumatic experiences when they think of their mother. Some may wish that their mothers lived in closer proximity. Some mothers are no longer physically with us on this earth. Some wish that they could be mothers and can't. Others may have a good relationship with their mothers. And some While Mother's Day is thought to be spent with their families, some just may want a day to themselves. (laughs) So I wanted to take a moment to honor the various situations that listeners may have as Mother's Day may not land the same for all. Now, shifting gears a little bit and moving on to viewing oneself as a mother. For those listeners who identify as a caregiver of some other form, Stay with me too, because these may apply to you as well. Or perhaps it may offer you a new point of view. Personally speaking, motherhood has changed my life, which is obvious as now there is another human who depends on me. However, I did not realize how much my life would change. When my son was born, things were no longer about me. And every single choice that I made was made with this tiny human kept in mind. What I want to remind mothers of today, whether you're listening again to this on Mother's Day or any other day, is that yes, we love our children most times. (laughs) No, even when we may not like our kids, we still love them. And we do so much for our kids. However, it is important to not lose oneself as a mother and to remember who you are as a woman and as a human. When our kids are young, we pour our all into them. 
And rightly so. They need a lot more of us when they are young. They need us to do more things for them. But what seems to happen is that while we do so much for our kids, we seem to lose ourselves. And I wanted to provide some simple reminders today to all the mothers and caregivers who are listening. The first is listen to your heart. As you scroll on pictures through social media, and as you look at other people's highlight reels, it is easy to get caught up in that perfect life or in the right way to raise your kids. And I'd like to offer to not compare yourself to others. Because the truth is, kids don't come with a manual. And what works for you may not work for somebody else. It is totally okay to eat Cheerios for dinner or to extend your child's bedtime to a time that works for you. Kids will let you know what they need. All you have to do is listen. And listening to your heart is super important so that you can know what works for you and what works for your family. Of course, while you're listening, listening unconditionally is important to do for your kids too. So get on the floor, play with them, pretend to be whatever they'd like for you to be. Play at least 10 to 20 minutes a day if you have it. Listen to their stories, even when you're not that interested. Listen to their dating woes. Listen to everything they have to share because they do tell you so much and sometimes not with their words. So listen to your heart and also listen with your heart. The next tip is to invest in yourself. When our kids are young, we put our all into the mom role that we can sometimes lose ourselves in that role. And as sentimental as our kids' precious moments may be, as mothers, we must still remember that there's a warrior woman standing before she became a mama. So go out with friends, do things that fill your soul, make time to read that book, sit down to drink that cup of coffee. Investing in yourself makes you a more patient and a more happy mom. And our kids and sometimes our partners and our spouses, they'll never understand how tiring it is and how much of our soul it takes to be the best mom that we can be and that mental energy it takes to balance it all. They'll never understand what it feels like to want to do more while feeling that you have nothing left to give. So for this reason, it is important to invest in yourself, sometimes if needed, reinventing yourself, but always giving yourself the space and the time to rest so that you can be the best mom you can be. And the next tip is to think positive. Sounds so simple, but it holds a lot of weight. Being a mom is tough. The nights are long, the days are short, and while the tantrums seem to be never ending, watching them sleep is a blessing. The way we think, the way we speak has a big impact on the way our kids think and speak. When we think positive, it really makes an impact on their own mindset as well. So when frustrated, instead of immediately yelling, Take a breath and remind yourself that your reactions make an impact on them too. So instead of yelling and losing your cool, just say, remind me where those Legos are supposed to go. Show me how to do that again the right way. Let's try this one more time. These are just different examples of things you can say. Because while yelling may come naturally and quickly, we may end up upsetting our kids and frustrating ourselves. Let's speak positive and let's think positive and believe in the power of yes so that our children can know that they can be anything that they want to be. And of course, if you need a little bit more help, I have created a free guide that's called How to Talk to Kids Without Losing Your Cool, which is a great resource that goes into some of this language. You can find that linked below. 
After becoming a mother, so many things have been made clear. I'll never know the tears that my mom cried for me, what she sacrificed for me to just do her best, despite anything that was happening around her. And as I try to emulate my mom's positive qualities while trying to do better for my own son, my son will never know all I do for him. It's important to be there for our kids, of course, but it's also important to be there for ourselves. Remember, you are one awesome mom, in case you needed the reminder. And sure, the house can always be cleaner. There's always one more book which can be read, and you may not make it to every game or every concert. But the truth is, you're doing great work. When your kids grow up, they will not remember how much you worked or how much money you made, but they will remember the special times and all the laughs. And the better you feel inside and outside, the more you're able to be there for them to have those laughs, to have those special moments, and to create the memories that they will remember as they get older. So with all that being said, I'd like to wish each and every one of you a happy Mother's Day, especially to my own family, to my cousins, my aunts, my sorority sisters, colleagues, girlfriends, and of course, to my own mom, who's one amazing person. I thank you all for the long talks, for shoulders to lean on, sometimes to cry on, as it is with the help the shoulders of each other, the advice that we offer and the humor and space that we hold for each other, that we take the reins of motherhood successfully. So right now, regardless of where you are or what you're doing, bring awareness to the space that you're in, not only physically, but perhaps emotionally. Bring awareness to where that message landed and where your thoughts and feelings lay. And with those thoughts and feelings, I'd like for you to think of kind thoughts and wishes that you'd like to offer to any mom friends. Mom friends who are doing an awesome job. Mom friends who may need a hug, who may need some time, who may need some space to remember who they are. Think of these kinds of thoughts and wishes. Think of the people that you'd like to send them to. And with one inhale and exhale, send these kind thoughts and wishes to these special people in your life. Next, think of some kind thoughts and wishes to a mother or caregiver figure who perhaps may not be here with you on this earth. As you breathe in, think of their memory. And as you breathe out, smile that you've had the opportunity to create such wonderful memories. And I hope that you're able to live in this peace today and every day. Have a great week. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. It would mean a ton if you took this moment to review the Free To Be Mindful podcast on the platform you catch your favorite shows. That quick and easy act lets me know what you enjoy and it helps others find the podcast too. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you can listen along next week. In the meantime, I welcome you to catch me on social media at Counselor V De Jesus. And as always remember, in a world where you are free to be anything that you wanna be, you are always free to be mindful. Catch you next week.